Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh everyone. Uh, here I am in a hotel room in Boston, alhamdulillah. Uh, just got in so I know I'm a few minutes late. <clears throat> uh, this time I'm not gasping for air though, alhamdulillah, so I'm fully refreshed. Um, but I am a little worried about the, uh, the hotel Wi-Fi. And uh, yes, I have T-Mobile and it's not the best of service. So inshallah, make dua for the service. Uh, for it to stay connected. Hopefully we won't have any uh, issues with, with cutting off on the live stream or anything of that sort. <clears throat> so we actually come to <clears throat> one of my favorite portions, subhanAllah, of the Qur'an. This is Juz 7. And Juz 7 um, is the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah and the beginning of Surah Al-An'am. So it starts at Surah Al-Ma'idah from verse 82 and it goes to Surah Al-An'am verse 110. Now, um, Surah Al-Ma'idah is still within the Madani breath, so it still has the same concepts, the same um, ideas are being revealed in Surah Al-Ma'idah, where you have a um, you have uh, the concept of law constantly being alluded to. Uh, in fact, the laws get more mature as Surah Al-Ma'idah goes on, so it goes on from the, from the laws of the the meat slaughter to more laws and so on and so forth. Um, in regards to oats, in regards to intoxicants and gambling and sorcery and and uh, you know all of these different sophisticated laws that come in Medina, so it sort of continues along that same breath uh, that we've already been seeing in Surah Al Maidah, and then of course it ends with with the story of Isa Alayhisalam, the story of of Jesus peace be upon him and the table spread, which we'll talk about, and then Surah Al An'am is actually a Makki surah, so it's going to be the introduction of Makki Quran. Uh, as we're going along with the Qur'an. It's the first time a Mecca surah shows up um, in the Qur'an and it's a glorious, glorious, glorious surah. And of course, all of the Qur'an is glorious, but you'll see why um, Al-An'am is so uh, powerful um, in this regard. <clears throat> so Surah Al-Ma'idah, if we get into it from verse 82 onwards, uh, we see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala praises some of the Christians that recognize the truth as they hear it. وَإِذَا سَمِعُوا مَا أُنزِلَ إِلَى الرَّسُولِ تَرَى أَعْيُنُهُمْ تَفِيضُ مِنَ الدَّمْعِ مِمَّا عَرَفُوا مِنَ الْحَقِّ يَقُولُونَ رَبَّنَا آمَنَّا فَاكْتُبْنَا مَعَ الشَّاهِدِينَ That there is a group of Christians that when they hear about the Prophet ﷺ, when they hear about Islam, they recognize that this is indeed the awaited messenger, that this is the continuation. So right away they say, oh Allah, you know, their eyes swell up with tears and they say, oh our Lord, we believe, so write us down um, from amongst uh, those who bear witness, meaning write us down from amongst the Ummah of Muhammad ﷺ. And this is uh, at the occasion of, according to some of the Mufassirin, uh, some of the, the priests that were sent by Najashi and Abyssinia to meet the Prophet ﷺ, that there was a group of priests. And <clears throat> when the Prophet ﷺ recited the Qur'an to them, they all started to cry and they recognized the truth. The same way that Najashi also cried and recognized the truth when he heard the message. So this was a group of Christians that were waiting for the Prophet ﷺ when they heard about the Prophet ﷺ, they immediately accepted it. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the thawab, the reward for these people that recognized the Prophet ﷺ and that accepted the Prophet ﷺ and that believed in the previous prophets and saw this as a continuation. And in fact, there's something very beautiful. The Prophet ﷺ said that a person who believed in Isa alayhi salam and then believed in the Prophet ﷺ, then he would have two rewards. He would actually have double the ajr for believing in Jesus, peace be upon him, and then believing in the Prophet wasallam. So there's a special reward for the one who acknowledged Isa Islam, acknowledged Jesus, peace be upon him, and then moves on to acknowledge the Prophet wasallam um, as well. So then we move on to the new laws. So in verse 89, for example, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the breaking of the oaths. Um, and he mentions the kafara, he mentions the expiation. And I know that a lot of us are accustomed to, if we say, wallahi, uh, and it's wrong that we fast for three days. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala actually mentions إِطْعَامُ عَشْرَةِ masakin To feed ten poor people or to clothe ten poor people. And if you're incapable of feeding ten poor people or clothing ten poor people, uh, then you fast for three days. So usually when it comes to expiation, you start off with fasting and you go to charity. But when it comes to the oats, you start off with charity and then you move to fasting as a, uh, as a last uh, resort. Um, so we, we go in now to verse 90 to 93. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya amanu innam al khamru wal maysiru wal ansabu wal azlamu rizsun min amal al shaytani fajtanibuhu la'allakum tuflihun. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, O you who believe, verily intoxicants and gambling 
and uh, sacrificing upon, you know, uh, sacrificing in a way that's inappropriate, uh, you know, basically to other than Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and uh, allotting arrows, um, you know, in, in a way that you're, you're casting arrows and you're trusting the shayateen, all of these are from the deviations of the shaytan, so avoid them so that you may be successful. So the first mentions of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala telling everyone to, to avoid all of these things. Now obviously when these things were legislated in Medina, a lot of the Muslims felt a sense of stress. Why? Because they were accustomed to drinking, they were accustomed to gambling, they were accustomed to uh, al-ansab, al-azlam, you know, the sacrifices, and, and especially the arrows and things of that sort. So this was very stressful to them. So when it came down, a lot of them started to puke out the khamr that they drank, uh, and they started to try to get anything out of their system that they felt like was inappropriate. So subhanAllah, it's, it's very beautiful that in verse 93, immediately after the prohibition, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, لَيْسَ عَلَى الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ جُنَاحٌ فِي مَا طَعِمُوا إِذَا مَتَّقَوْا وَآمَنُوا وَعَمِلُوا الصَّالِحَاتِ that there is no blame on those who believe and do righteousness for what they've consumed in the past. They don't have to worry about the haram that they've consumed in the past, whether that was in the form of inappropriate food or whether it was in the form of alcohol consumption, which was the real concern for the people, uh, the followers of the Prophet ﷺ, because they, drinking was a part of the culture uh, at the time. So for, for the prohibition of khamr to come, uh, they were very scared. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala puts them to ease right away in verse 93 uh, and tells them that they won't be charged so long as they've actually made that change in their lives. Uh, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is not going to hold them accountable for that which they've done in the past. Uh, verse 94 to, the, to verse 100, you see the laws of hunting in ihram and hajj and umrah. So particularly uh, more laws are being developed now as, as a, you know, in regards to how to uphold the sanctity of the Kaaba the sanctity of the ihram, and when hunting is prohibited. Um, <clears throat> Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also in the middle, this is 94 to 100, in the middle of these verses, He says, Uhilla lakum Saydul Bahri. So Allah makes permissible, uh, you know, the game of the sea. So, so, so uh, you know, fishing and so on and so forth, eating that which comes from the sea. And the Prophet ﷺ of course said that its water is pure and its animals are pure as well. So sea life is pure for you. As well, so Allah makes the, some prohibitions as well as uh, expressing the permission for the believers to eat from uh, the sea. The reason why this is important is because uh, many of the Muslims saw this connection to the people of the book, so they assumed that the laws of halal were really following exactly in the laws of kosher. So there was a fear that eating from the sea would actually be prohibited, as it is in some ways in the in, in kosher law. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made it clear that, that uh, a gift to this ummah is that all that is that comes from the sea um, is halal. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Ya ayyuha ladheena amanu. This is now verse 101 to 104. Ya ayyuha amanu, la an ashya in tasukkum. O you who believe, don't persist in questioning the way that the people of Musa Islam did, the way that Bani Israel did. And if, you know, because if, if you keep on asking, things are going to be shown to you and they will distress you. What that means is that, you know, if you keep on asking and persist in asking, the Prophet ﷺ said, you make things haram for you. And if you remember in Surah An-Nisa, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the food was, all of the food was halal for Bani Israel, except for that which they made haram on themselves. So there was, an, there was added strictness when it wasn't uh, necessary that made things difficult upon them. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, it's okay if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made things halal for you, then stick to it. Don't persist in questioning in a way that you're going to make things uh, difficult. Uh, SubhanAllah, I just looked at the comments. Please don't ask for wives <laughs> while you're while you're chatting on, <laughs> on this thing. So <laughs> please take your marriage pursuits elsewhere. That's part of the haram questioning right now too. So um, yeah, so anyway, things are halal for you. Um, unless they've been made haram, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, don't go into details the way that the people of Musa Islam did and make things haram for you that aren't haram for you in the first place. Then you have uh, the laws of the will and the final testament. So verse 105 to 108, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala clarifies uh, some of the questions about the will and the final testament. And finally, from, from 109 until the end of the surah, you have the story of Isa alayhi salam, the story of Jesus, peace be upon him. 
And it starts off with إِذْ قَالَ الْحَوَارِيُونَ When the disciples said, يَا عِيسَى بْنَ مَرْيَمْ هَلْ يَسْتَطِيعُ رَبُّكَ أَنْ يُنَزِّرَ عَلَيْنَا مَا إِذَةَ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ Is it possible that you can ask your Lord to send down to us a table spread with food from the heaven? Now what this refers to is that Isa Islam, towards the end of his life, he fasted with his followers uh, for a period of 30 days. So they asked at the end of that fast if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala could send them some special food for them. So they asked Isa Islam, is it possible that your Lord can send us some food from the heaven? Isa alayhi salam says, اِتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِن كُنْتُمْ مُؤْمِنِينَ Fear Allah if you are believers. Here's the thing, Isa alayhi salam, he understood the question uh, as being one of doubt. But they clarified to Isa alayhi salam saying that, no, it's not one of doubt, you know, we just want to eat from it. Well, and, and, and it will also put our hearts to eat, ease. وَنَعْلَمُ أَنْ قَدْ صَدَقْتَنَا And will be even more affirmed, reaffirmed in our faith that you've indeed told the truth to us. So we're not asking you for doubt, we're just asking for a gift from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And Isa understood that, so he made dua to Allah, and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent upon them a beautiful table spread with all types of food and so on and so forth. Now the gem of this in particular is compare the disciples of Christ, the disciples of Jesus, peace be upon him, to the followers of Musa alayhi salam, when the food came down from the heavens for them. They were completely ungrateful, they had full doubt, they mocked Musa alayhi salam. They mocked the food that came down to Musa alayhi salam. Isa alayhi salam, this group of disciples, they're grateful. They fully understand that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who sends food. They do sajda to shukr, they prostrate out of gratitude at the end. So this is a completely different quality of people. So Allah is praising this quality of people in the disciples of Isa alayhi salam, the disciples of Christ. As for those that went astray after Christ after Jesus, peace be upon him. Uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions the end, the last four ayat or five ayat of the surah, where Isa alayhi salam is being raised on the day of judgment and he's being asked, did you tell the people to take you as a God besides Allah? You or your mother as a God beside Allah. Um, and Isa alayhi salam says, Subhanak, ma yakunu li an aqula ma laysa li bihaq. How perfect are you? I, could, I would never say that which I don't have the right to say. If I would have said that, فَقَدْ عَلِمْتَ Because you would have known that, O oh Allah. تَعْلَمُ مَا فِي نَفْسِي You know what's inside of me. I don't know what's inside of you. You are alam al ghuyub You're the knower of the unseen. So Isa alayhi salam, uh, first of all, distancing himself from the claim that he is a god, uh, or that he is that you know that, that he is a partner with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And then Isa alayhi salam uh, saying that, you know, look, I was a witness upon them. مَا دُمْتُ فِيهُمْ As long as I was amongst them. فَلَمَّا تَوَفَّيْتَنِي But once you took me back, O oh Allah, you were the one who was raqib. You were the one who was, who was observing them and, and, and watching over them and so on and so forth. In تُعَذِّبْهُمْ If you punish them, they are your servants. And if you forgive them, then you are the all-wise and the all-knowing. Uh, or, or, you know, uh, this, is, this is Isa alayhi salam, Jesus peace be upon him, saying that, O oh Allah, you know, I did not teach them that. You know that, O oh Allah. And of course, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows that. But it's part of the bearing witness on the Day of Judgment. And in, on the Day of Judgment, the victim is asked as opposed to the one who's, who's, uh, who's the oppressor. And in this situation, Isa Islam is the victim of having a claim associated to him that he never made, alayhi salam. So that's the end of Surah Al-Ma'idah. It is one of the very last surahs of the Qur'an. Uh, it coincides with the farewell of the Prophet Sallallahu So in fact, some of the last ayat of Al-Ma'idah also are of the last ayat that were revealed to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And then we move into Surah Al-An'am. Surah Al-An'am is again the first...